will go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome FedEx Cup number one, world number one, Scotty Scheffler, to the interview room here at the Travelers Championship. Scotty, we always appreciate your time. Uh, you're making your third start here at the Travelers Championship. Obviously, a, a pretty incredible event given the last dramatic finishes and so forth. Great field this week. So, with that, just some thoughts on uh, being here this week. Yeah. Canada, when I get to sit with you, I introduce you as having eight top tens and 17 starts this season. We add one to that, nine top tens and 19 starts coming off your great finish last week at the U.S. Open. Uh, just some thoughts on how you're feeling as you're heading into the week uh, coming off of that good finish last week. Yeah, game feels like it's in a good spot. Yeah, I've I've played really well this year. I played I played good again last week. I hit it really good. Um, just to win major championships, those putts got to go in. You got to get those little breaks here and there. And last week, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the job done. But you know, it was a fun ride there at the end. My my start on Sunday was was extremely exciting and fun. And to be in contention on the weekend at a major is always such a good time. And coming up one shot short hurts, but you know, at the end of the day, it was it was a fun ride. Okay, well, I know we have got limited time, so we'll open it up and take a few questions. If you'll, like, right here in the second row, if just put your hand up, and we'll try and get a microphone to you. Yeah, uh, Scotty, when you're in a tournament with Rory, you know, number one and number two, is that something that you're conscious of? Do you, do you relish that challenge of, of being in a tournament with, you know, the, one, the guy who's closest to you, at least in the rankings? Yeah, um, yeah, he may be close to me in the rankings now, but he's won a uh, few more tournaments than I have out here. <laughs> Rory's a pretty historic player on tour, and so anytime I, we can be in fields with guys like Rory, Jordan, JT, and you know, have an opportunity to compete against those guys on the weekend would be would be really special for all of us. You know, I grew up watching Rory on TV. I I grew up a few years behind JT and Jordan, and um, you know, I've looked up to those guys for a number of years, and. I've I've taken good bits and pieces of advice from them as well, and so to be able to kind of be out here competing with them is is really a dream come true for me. Go right. Uh, we'll go Fergie, and then back to the second. I'm round. way off topic, if you don't mind. I heard a story when you played your first U.S. Open at Aaron Hills and made the cut, had a good week uh, or second U.S. Open, I guess, wasn't it? Either way, you were supposed to play in the Northeast the next week. And there was an assumption that you would withdraw because it had been an exhausting week, and you went ahead and played. Do you do you have any kind of a policy or theory on when you when you say yes, you, you, it's a yes? Well, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd like to be a man of my word, and so you know, this would be another event where um, playing the week after a major is is not necessarily easy, especially when you're in contention. And for me, you know, I've I committed to this event, you know, and I want to be here. It's a fun event, and so. Yeah, definitely. I, w- I want to be a man of my word when I say something. I, I want to follow through, and it's definitely something that's that's important to me for sure. Good second row right here, Scotty. You haven't played here with a full, you know, the full atmosphere with all the fans and everything. Have you heard anything about this event and what are you looking forward to? Well, shoot, if last year wasn't full fans, that was pretty exciting. You know, there were some loud roars, and watching that playoff on TV was really cool. Um, especially with those putts the guys were making. I remember the putt Kramer, I think he made it in regulation to kind of keep things going. He made like an 8 to 10 footer and everybody around the hill on 18 was just going crazy. And um, if that wasn't full fans, then I'm really excited to see what it's going to be like this week with full fans. And so um, I haven't been in contention with this event either, so I haven't really gotten kind of the full, the full feel of everything. And um, playing in front of large crowds is, is always a good time. Scotty, there seems to be something about this tournament that produces exciting finishes. It seems like year after year there's a Sunday that produces fireworks. Is there something about this course setup or this tournament in particular that leads to that? And do you think that might have something to do with the strength of field that continues to show up here each year? Well, so I think the strength of field you see just from um, it being hosted on a good golf course. You know, this is a really good golf course. There's nothing really tricky about it. You're not going to have guys complaining that it's either too hard or too easy or whatever it is. Um, This is one of those golf courses throughout the year where you're not going to hear many complaints from people. And I'm sure that's why a lot of the, the top players will come. It's also a very simple week for us. You know, like I said, Travelers does a really good job of taking care of us as players, taking care of our wives, taking care of our trainers, taking care of our caddies. And it's really a simple week for all of us. And so being able to come up here to Connecticut and just have a nice relaxing week and enjoy competition is really fun. And um, the golf course, I think with the way 15, 16, 17 are, and then 
I've never really been a huge fan of having water on 18 as a finishing hole. I don't know why. I think, like, just a nice, like, classic uphill par four, like this one has, where if you hit a good drive, you're going to be rewarded and maybe make a birdie. And if you get into trouble, you could make a bogey, but it's not necessarily like a crazy hard hole or a crazy easy hole. Um, it's just a simple, simple hole to finish. And you see exciting finishes on stuff like that. And so for me, um, the golf course is really good. Good, Doug. And then in the second row, two rows up. Two parter, Scotty. Being in the same kind of, I guess, management stable, were you surprised by Brooks's decision? And and secondly, do you have any any concerns about about uh, the immediate future of the tour? So, I'll start with the Brooks thing. That was definitely a surprise for me. Um, you know, I was at a function with him last week, and definitely wasn't what we, he had in mind. You know, we were focused on building the PGA Tour and getting the guys that are staying here together, and um, you know, kind of just having talks and figuring out what how we can, you know, help benefit the tour. And so to see Brooks leave was definitely a surprise for us. Um, you know, with that being said, he's made his decision. I'm not going to, you know, knock him for doing that. He made a decision that's best for him, and I'm not I'm not going to be one to judge him on that. Um, for me, it's it's not where I see myself heading anytime soon. I, I grew up wanting to be on the PGA Tour. I grew up of dreaming of playing in these events. I didn't grow up of in playing in the Centurion Club in London or whatever it is or in um, – I grew up wanting to play in the Masters. I grew up wanting to play in Austin. I grew up wanting to play at Colonial, the Byron Nelson. I wouldn't trade those memories for, for anything at this moment in time. Um, those memories to me are invaluable. I would never risk going and you know losing the opportunity to bring go back to Augusta every year or to do any. There, there's nothing that I would want to do right now that would would risk having any any sort of effects on, on way, the way my life is now. And the second part of your question, concerns for the tour. Um, I think most of the guys are still have a lot of faith in what the tour is doing. The tour is doing everything in their power to make it the best tour for all the players out here. And I think we get behind Jay as our leader and um, just kind of figuring out what's best for the tour. I think we released something today about some new events and new bigger purses. And right now the best players in the world are still on the PGA Tour. Um, the guys on top of the leaderboard last week were on the PGA Tour. Canada was one of the coolest events that I've been to, and it was my first time up there. And being able to play in front of the crowds and have those, you know, really euphoric moments where you're actually able to make a putt to win a tournament, like finishing out the Masters and becoming number one in the world in Austin are memories that I could never, ever come close to replacing with, with an amount of money. And so for me, I'm not looking – towards anything being able to take that away from the guys that have chosen to stay out here on tour. What's going on off the golf course has been dominating the conversation. Anytime you come in here, you're going to get asked about it. I'm curious if the conversations are similar on the range, in the house, during practice rounds, or are you guys not as um, into this on a minute-to-minute -minute basis? Well, first, firstly... Up until today, I had two questions the entire year about live golf, literally. And one of them was off camera. And the second one, I kind of put my foot in my mouth a little bit in Canada. And so now I feel like I'm a bit more prepared to answer questions about it. But at home, yeah, we talk about it. Um, it's definitely interesting. You know, you have this, this government and the investment fund doing all these things to try and kind of attack our tour. Um, and some guys are going and some guys aren't. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely – confusing for us as players there's, you know, there's just a lot going on and so at home um not much discussion definitely on the range there's a little bit but at the end of the day you know if guys are going to want to go they can they can leave and like i said i'm not going to sit here and judge them for that it's it's up to them they're going to make their decision and they know what's best for them i don't know what's best for their lives and um at the end of the day that's probably hopefully that's always going to be my position i don't want to be getting in anybody else's business Rory was mentioning a little bit about the fatigue level starting to set in for him after you know four tournaments in a row. So where is your fatigue level at, at this point, and how do you measure that and decide when when is a good time to take a break and when is not a good time to take a break, especially after a major? Yeah, I think that that's a real thing. Physically, I feel wonderful. Um, mentally, it's definitely been more of a grind this year. I've I've always been a guy that's played a lot of tournaments. Um. And life on the golf course has changed for me significantly in the last six months. Life off the golf course hasn't really changed at all, but life on the golf course, whether it's fans watching me play practice round or when I'm on the putting green and I finish up, there may be 
people, you know, always watching and it's like, hey, can we have a picture, can we have an autograph? And, you know, I got to come in here every week now and things are just a little bit different and I'm more than happy to do all those things. Those are wonderful, wonderful things for me to do and I'm happy to do them. It just takes more energy. And so how Rory says playing four weeks in a row can be very taxing, it, I'm certain that it is. And, you know, three weeks in a row is taxing as well. Um, and you kind of have to build your breaks into the season. And so when I get home for off weeks, you know, I'm really doing everything I can just to get mental rest. You know, physically, I think the toll on actually playing is, is not as taxing as it is mentally. Yep. Bill, right here in the green. Um, Scotty, is, is there any amount of money that would change your mind about staying with the PGA Tour? I don't think so. I think if there was, I'm, there's a place you can find it now. <laughs> um, like I said, I the money that we have on the PGA Tour, I never dreamt of playing for this much money as I do now. I mean, I can't. I don't know. I don't know how much money I've made this year, but it's definitely more than I deserve from whacking a little white golf ball around. Um, and for me, the memories that I have playing on this tour and the dreams I have of wanting to be on this tour and. Um, it, it can't be replaced by anything financial. Um, you know, money's money, and it's not something that I'm trying to let control how I live my life. Um, you know, like Rory said, when you're making decisions purely based off of financial reasons and, you know, fear, fear-based fear stuff, it doesn't always work out what's best. Um, for me, definitely hasn't worked out best in the past, whatever I was doing. If I was doing it purely for financial reasons, for me, um, it's not what works. Um, for other people, maybe it, it is. And I'm not going to sit here and, and tell them what they should or shouldn't do. Um, for me, playing golf on the PGA Tour is well um, compensated plenty for how I, for what I do for a living. Somebody else? Scotty. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, going off of what you said before about fatigue, uh, something a lot of the players have been discussing is the fall <laughs> schedule and how it, you know, it's the, the, the golf calendar is just, you know, full 52 weeks. So, uh, and you mentioned before about how what they're going to announce new events and stuff like that. What do you think would be best for the tour to do during that portion of the schedule? And, you know, what what's going to come? During the, the fall schedule? schedule? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Long. Um, you know, the tour's really bounced around a lot with their format of the fall series and stuff like that. Um, personally, I think building an off-season into golf would be good. Um, for me, it's always been hard kind of managing whether it be stuff at home with our friends, if someone's getting married, if, you know, our friends want to go on a vacation. That stuff's always really hard to plan around. And so for me, even in, if it's a month, just being like, hey, you know, December for us has always been kind of one where it's like, you know, we could have time here, but it's still difficult. And so just having a little bit of an off an off season would be nice. Um, but with that being said, I, I like playing golf. You know, I've always been a guy that plays a lot of events. And I'm sure when I start having kids and life changes off the golf course, I'll, I'll slow down. Um, but for right now, Meredith travels with me every week, and we have a great time out here on the PGA Tour. Um, in terms of what they could do, I think guys always appreciate um, – me think I'm trying to figure out how to word it I think I think there's a good balance between rewarding people for good play and punishing those that may or not punishing but like when I came out on tour you always had those world golf championships and so maybe having a few events like those back where those guys at the top of you know the FedEx Cup for that year or the top of the world ranking or whatever it is you know we'll able to have an opportunity where it may be a smaller field event um, those don't hurt, but there's there's got to be a good balance between giving guys that are either struggling to keep their card or coming up from the Corn Ferry Tour where they get rewarded for good golf and they can get into those events and be a part of those. And, you know, whatever we can do to get the best players congregated more often and have the guys that haven't made it to the top yet have plenty of opportunity to work their way into those events and into those fields and have opportunities at those tournaments – but whatever we can do, I think, as a PGA Tour to get the best guys playing against each other the most often, um, I think is what will work best for the tour in the future. And so, like, I think Canada turned out like a fantastic, turned out such a fantastic event because of the guys you had in the final group. You had Tony, um, Rory, and JT playing in the final group. I mean, 
if you love golf, who wouldn't want to watch that? You know, you have three historically great players in our game going and competing for the same trophy. And whatever I think we can do as a tour to have more of that would be beneficial. But like I said, you have to have avenues for guys that may not be at the top right now to be able to work their way into those events and have opportunities because I think one of the strengths of the PJ Tour is the level of talent we have across the board. And so you'll see it at events like this where, you know, a guy like a Kramer Hickok last year, you know, may not have been someone that was looked at a lot at the beginning of the week to win that golf tournament, but he very easily could have won this tournament last year. And guys like that always need to have, have opportunity out here. Okay, Scotty, well, we appreciate your time. We're going to have Commissioner Monaghan right up momentarily, so thank you and have a great oh, week. You guys can ask Jay all those questions. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time.